So I wanted to teach on this. The word that the Lord gave me this morning was, of all things, faithfulness. And it's something that I look at at CFFC, and I've been here for a little over 24 years now in this church, and we've been a church for 26, and I just have to tell you, I haven't seen a change in faithfulness here from the beginning until now. I haven't seen one time when we've come short in that. Every need has been met. Every person that has attended here has been blessed. We have seen many people come to the Lord here and give their heart to him and just dwell in his goodness. I've watched people rise up who have been so knocked down by life into a place where self-esteem has been reestablished in them and where they know who they are in Christ and who he is in them. And though there may be many that can say things about us, they can say things against us, we know something else. The things that they say is usually from an attitude of prideful jealousy because they see us doing things consistently. I think about the faithfulness of our missions giving. I think about how many missionaries, how many pastors, how many ministries, how many homeless people, how many people that are sick, that are destitute, that have nothing, that are blessed because of this church body. You know, I have to tell you, I think about a time a number of years ago when I was in Guatemala with my wife. And it's a funny thing because she was so excited when I came home the year before from having a team there. And she goes, I wish I could go on a mission trip. And I said, fine, let's take a week of vacation. Let's go to Guatemala. My wife looked at me like I had three heads. And I was like, it's okay, we're going to be blessed. Two things really stood out to me on that trip. It stood out to me that the people of this church prayed for us because they knew we were on vacation, but they didn't really know what all was going on. And I just told a couple of people, well, we're just going to take a week's vacation. We're going to Guatemala. My wife had a vision and a dream that had been planted in her that Pastor Tom and Diane nurtured, that she wanted to be a Christian clown and be able to share the gospel by clowning. They supported her in five years that she went to Michigan to an actual Christian clown college to learn how to do this without fooling anybody because what's worse than somebody coming up and giving you one of those million dollar things and you go, wow, that's really cool. And you open it up and realize it's a tract and it says something to you. And it does work with some people, but a lot of people, it turns them off. I watched her in another country where she couldn't speak one word of language that they use. And she shared the gospel with 2,600 people on Guatemalan Independence Day. The best part of the whole trip, though, was the last day. There was this lady there whose name was Big Julia, okay? She was the sweetest lady you'd ever want to meet. She fed her mission team the year before, and we found out that she was being attacked by sugar diabetes, and she was starting to lose her vision a little bit. My wife gave her her reading glasses, and she handed them to her, you would have thought this woman got a million dollars. And she gave him to her, and she just turned around, she started crying, and I mean, and she was not just chubby, big lady. I thought she was going to squeeze the life out of my wife. <laughs> and she took a hold of her, and she was crying, and she turned around, and she goes, mi casa, su casa, my house is your house from now on. And we watched what one little gift could do. I've seen this church faithfully, under the leadership of Pastor Tom, step up time after time after time after time after time to give, not just to missions, 
in foreign places, not just to missions in other states, but to people in this congregation that have needed to be blessed and people of the community that have been blessed. And I just look at that and I see that and I stand there and I say, so many times God says in his word about a faithful man, a faithful man, a faithful man will receive much. And I think about that and I'm like, wow, if only Pastor Tom could have had a vision years ago about what was going to come from his faithfulness. I've had the opportunity to speak to his spiritual fathers and hear about his faithfulness when he was a younger man. I don't always live up to his example 100%, but I'm really trying. And I have to tell you something. I see the fruit of it now. I see it in every face in this church. I see it every time we go to do something, when we've got a task to do, and I turn around and look at a couple of people and say, hey, could you give me a hand? And next thing I know, I got people pushing me out of the way because they want to go do it. That all comes because he sowed that and passed it down to each one of us. And I appreciate that so much. In Luke chapter 16 and verse 10, And I know Pastor Tom lives this verse out in his life. In the New King James, it says, He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. I can tell you something from me to you. Pastor Tom is so faithful with everything. Okay? People look at us, and it's funny because I just went through this the other day. There was somebody that was here to see me that doesn't normally come to church. And every place that I went to, I shut the lights off behind me. And they were like, why are you doing that? And I said, it seems like a little thing. But when we opened this building, the first month's electric bill came in, and we all just sat there with our eyeballs like this. Well, by those little things that we do, we've cut that down by two-thirds a month from what it started out as. That doesn't seem like a lot in some people's minds, but you know what? That all goes into the budget to make other things take place. We're doing a free VBS next week. How do we do those things? Because we're faithful in the little things and because pastor has watched over us and made sure that we're faithful in the little things we do. Sometimes it makes uh, some of us on staff a little crazy because it's like, okay, when you order something, make sure you get it with no shipping or the lowest shipping you possibly can. I don't care if you got to search through 15 websites, find the best price. But pastor, no, but pastor, do it. Yes, sir. Okay. You know what? It's those little things that have kept us faithful. I had somebody say to me not long ago, they go, I understand that you have a big church and that you brag about your church all the time. And I go, I do. Absolutely. And they go, okay. And who's the rich people that paid off your church? I said, all of them. See, there was a mentality in Sussex County years ago that most people don't know about, okay? There were a few rich people in every church, and they were the ones that controlled the church. All right. We don't have that issue. You know why we don't? There's only one person in charge of this church. His name is Jesus. He's our Lord. He's our Savior. And Pastor Tom is his under-shepherd, and he's raised up others under him who are able to recognize where things come from and how they flow. And that's faithfulness. That's faithfulness. That's why 26 years later, we're still going strong, and we're still growing. And we're going to keep on growing. In Proverbs chapter 20, verses 6 and 7, Proverbs 20, 6 and 7. And you don't have the blessing of seeing it up on the screen today because I didn't have the time to put it all together today. (laughs) 
Proverbs 20, 6 and 7 says, Most men will proclaim each his own goodness, but who can find a faithful man? And the righteous man walks in his integrity, and his children are blessed after him. Let me just tell you something, folks. We are children of the Most High God, right? We are children of Jesus Christ. Not meaning to put anything else on this, we're also children of our under-shepherd. We're spiritual children of his, other than the three that are his natural children. But you know what? Because of the faithfulness that he's done, and that he didn't look out for his own good, but he kept looking and keeps looking to Lord Jesus Christ, each and every one of us are blessed. We receive the blessings of the Lord, and we receive the blessings that flow downwards. And I have to be very honest with you, I have been so blessed to call him my spiritual father and my mentor. Have we had uncomfortable conversations? You better believe it. Why is that? A good father chastens his child. Okay, is it uncomfortable? Yes. Yes. Do you like to be chastened? No, never have. But you know what? I walk away from those conversations and at first I have to get my humanity under control and then after I think about it for a few minutes, I go, wow, I really needed that. It helps me to grow. It helps me to love others. It helps me to be kind and compassionate and it also gives me an example to reach up for. You know, I, I, <laughs> I have to be very honest with you. This morning has been one of those mornings when you just feel the flow is kind of not normal. I mean, if everybody didn't pick up on it, you know, I've been trying to flow up here the best I can. Dan's been helping me. Brandy's been helping me. I've got a lot of encouragement going on and all that stuff. But I got to tell you something. We didn't miss a beat. We didn't miss a beat here. Why? Every volunteer, every person of this church has come together to show that we can press through the challenge of whatever it might be. That is faithfulness. That is faithfulness. I can't thank our volunteers enough. The people that give of themselves... And I'm going to tell you a little something. You may not have a name badge. You may not have a life shirt. You may not have a production shirt. You may not have a security shirt. You may not have a whatever shirt. You may not have any of that other stuff. But you know what? I see what goes on here. I see the people that'll stop and pick up a piece of paper off the floor. I see the people that'll speak a kind word to somebody who they can tell might be hurting. All that matters. All that comes from faithfulness. All that draws others to want to be here. All of that works together. In Psalm 31, verse 23 and 24, and boy, the first part of this really hits my heart about this church. Oh, love the Lord, all you his saints, for the Lord preserves the faithful and fully, repay, or fully repays the proud person. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart, all you who hope in the Lord. You know, when I look at the first part of that and I see that, oh, love the Lord, all you as saints, I got to tell you a little something I see in this church, and I see it over and over again. We don't have to ask you to sing out for praise and worship. We don't have to ask you to raise your hands to praise the Lord. We don't have to ask you, okay, get ready. We're going to pray now. Everybody anticipates it and is ready for it. Everybody is faithfully expectant that we're going to do that. And what's really cool about that is when we take that step 
forward to show our love for him. He indwells amongst us. And we receive the fullness of his glory. You know, I don't know about you, but when I grew up as a kid, I can remember setting my very first watch to church time. A few people know where I'm going. I set my very first Timex watch. I was so proud of it, Timex, yay. And I set my watch, church time. Church when I was a kid, in the summertime, it was 9 to 10. In the wintertime, it was 10 to 11. That was church time. I set my watch to church time, and I would sit there as a kid and watch my watch at two minutes to 10 or two minutes to 11. You got two minutes, and I'm out the door. I am very serious, folks. I am very serious. You know what I love to watch around here? I love to watch kids that are on church time. They come through the front door. I'm going to be late for Sunday school. Come on. It's the total opposite of what it was when I was a kid because we were running to get out the door. They run to get in the door. We all run to get in this door. I watch people come across the parking lot. That's why I caught Chief George this morning because I watch that parking lot. I watch what people do. And I see people that are walking through the parking lot, and you see the occasional, you know, I've had a really tough week, and I really need. And then all of a sudden, you see somebody walk up to them, and it goes from, oh, to, hi, how you doing? Why? Because that's who God is. When we come into his presence, we go from that state of heaviness to that, Oh, boy, am I glad I'm in your presence right now. Man, am I blessed to receive your faithfulness. Man, do I need your love right now. Oh, Jesus, wrap your arms around me. You know what's funny? Jesus has used Ted to wrap his arms around me when he didn't know how hurt I was. He's used Scott to wrap his arms around me and give me a hug when he didn't know how hurt I was. He's used me to wrap my arms around other people when I didn't have a clue what they were going through. I've had, somebody, I've had a couple of people come up to me and say, man, you must be a really sharp guy. You always seem to know. And I go, no, I just give a lot of hugs. But you know what? You never know who that one is. You never know who that one person might be. But you know something? I learned something. I learned this by watching my pastor. I learned to pray before I come to church. I learned to pray before I leave my house in the mornings, even when I'm coming to work. Lord, give me divine appointments. Put me in the path of somebody who might be so hurting that they just need one person, just one, to let them know they care. And it doesn't matter who they are. doesn't matter how big, how small. doesn't matter how young, how old. doesn't matter any of that. It just matters they might need a touch of your faithful love. Boy, I'll tell you, there's nothing better that I see in this church than the love of Almighty God that flows out of every person that comes through our door. And if it doesn't the day they walk through the door, by the time they've been here a couple times, it does. It starts to flow in them. I remember a young man that came in here one time and he walked through the door and he looked at me and he says, he goes, I don't want you to think the wrong thing of me. Okay. And he goes, well, and he pulled up his sleeves and he showed me he had these beautiful tattoos down both arms. And he goes, I really had a tough young life. And he goes, and I really followed the wrong path, but I want to follow God now. And I looked at him and I said, okay, I have a great idea. He goes, what's that? 
I said, let me give you a hug. And he looked at me, he goes, you want to hug me? I said, yeah, I want to hug you. I took him in, I introduced him to three or four people in the church. Next thing I know, I look over, and there he sits every Sunday. Big smile on his face, and he's wrapping his arms around other people. And I got to be honest with you, that's not blowing my horn. That's what I learned here. I learned that kind of love. See, I have to be honest with you. I tease people a lot. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I tease people a lot, but I always tell them, I only tease the ones I love. <laughs> What's funny is, I get teased a lot. <laughs> Don't I tarry. <laughs> but it's a good thing because it's all love. <clears throat> In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run swiftly and be glorified just as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For not all have faith, but the Lord is faithful, who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. And we have confidence in the Lord concerning you, both that you do and will do the things we command you. Now may the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patience of Christ. See, I'm going to tell you something. Don't pray for patience. Stand on that scripture because God promises us he's going to give us that patience that we can stand in his faith and that we can love others. That we can be the love of Christ into a hurting world. And how many know we have a hurting world around us? I can tell you something right now. You don't have to drive very far past the end of our driveway to run into the hurting world. Okay? That's an honest truth. I try to tell people this a lot. When you get to the stop sign, our mission begins. Okay? A lot of times our mission comes here to meet us. But more times than not, when we cross that stop sign, we're going out to the mission field. You know, we just had a team that went down to the relief bus this weekend. If you get an opportunity to sign up to do that, sign up and do it, because I've got to be honest with you, you look in the heart and the eyes of hurting people, and you're able to give them a smile. When Juan was here a couple weeks ago, I sat right here next to him after the service and I said to him, you know that lady that was up there giving her testimony that had the cane? He goes, yeah. I said, the day that we were down there, I met her. And he goes, that's very possible. And I said, yeah, she was high as a kite when she came over. And he goes, really? And I said, yeah. And I said, you know what? We smiled at her. We gave her socks. We gave her food. And we gave her love. And then I turn around, I look up on our screen, and there she is. And I'm like, wow. Wow. Here we go again. We were able to touch another life from this church. Go figure. In New York City. Well, come on, Reverend Bob, what do you know about New York City? I know that up until I met and married my wife, I had been in New York City about that many times in my whole life. I had no clue of where we were the day we went down there with the relief bus. They just took us by this park, and they parked, and they stopped, and they were like, okay, we're here. Okay, and where is here? <laughs> but you know what? At the same time, I watched people, and I watched what was going on. I watched what this church does, and we do it well. 
Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. In verse 16. First Thessalonians 5, verse 16. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it, and rejoice always in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit and do not despise prophecies. Test all things. Hold fast what is good and abstain from every form of evil. And I have to be honest with you, that's one of the things that I learned from pastor a long time ago. He taught me how to dwell in God's peace. Does it sometimes get hard? Okay, let me ask you something. Have you ever had the rug pulled out from under you? Boy, it's really hard to hold on to peace at that moment, isn't it? But you know, I, I have a way of teaching that to people. I tell them you can't stop the knee-jerk reaction. You walk into a dark room and you know your family is in the house and it's just you. But you walk in that dark room and somebody trying to be funny goes, boo! Okay. No matter who you are, the initial reaction is usually, whoa! Then you come to your senses and chase them around the house. All right. It's the same thing in this. No matter what happens, the devil comes at you and goes, boo, and you get that initial knee jerk. But then you come back to that platform of peace, knowing that God is faithful and that he will get you through whatever it is that the devil is trying to throw against you. He will get you through it. That's part of being into a faithful body. You have no idea how many times I look at people and I say to them, remember something, God is first, spouse is second, children third, work is fourth, and church is fifth. And they go, church is fifth? How can church get that far down on the list? Because God is first always. Why we come to church is not to be with God. Why we come to church is when your batteries drain, you need to hook your cables to a battery that's fully charged and charge it back up again that you can get back out in the world and deal with spouse, children, and work. And boy, when you put those priorities right, I get around my brother Scott sometimes when I'm going through something, I go, you know what? I just got to hook my cables up to somebody that's charged and I got to get built back up again. He's been a faithful brother to me in that many times. And I have to tell you something. It's not that I'm lifting him up. It's just that we need to be that for other people too. And there's times when your battery gets drained and you just got to be able to sit down with somebody at church and say, okay, I just need you to pray with me and I need you to put your arm around me for a minute and say, God's got it. It's going to be okay. See, that doesn't lift the other person up. It just acknowledges God in their lives and helps you to connect back into that. Because you know what happens when the devil tries to trip you up? He tries to get to the place where you lose sight of him. Maybe nobody else has ever been there. I have. Okay? And it's tough at those times. But boy, somebody can say something to me, and it just parks my spirit again. I'm like, ooh, you're a bad devil. But you're a good God. Mm. That's why this church is so faithful. Because we teach that to people. We honor people with that. And we raise them up. It's a funny thing when you look at it. But this 
fine man of God who's normally up here on a Sunday morning. And yeah, I'm going to brag on him for a minute. I know he hates when I do that. So don't tell him. Hi, Pastor. I'm sure you're watching Facebook. <laughs> we'll talk tomorrow, I'm sure. <laughs> but I have to brag about him for a minute. I have very rarely seen anybody in my life, and I'm going to say that carte blanche, and I've met a lot of people who love the Lord Jesus Christ the way my pastor does, who is so connected with the Lord Jesus Christ that he gives that desire to other people. I have watched him do that for the years that I've known him, and I've watched it grow stronger, not weaker. And it gives me something to aim at when I'm seeing that. And I have to tell you the truth. We have different personalities. We don't always run together. Sometimes we rub pretty rough. But that's iron sharpening iron. But I will tell you something about Pastor Tom. He has the best intent toward Jesus Christ and CFFC. He loves his family and he loves this church family like no one I've ever seen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Bravo, Pastor. I just wanted to finish with that statement because that's the kind of faithfulness that he has instilled in each and every person that he's come in contact with here. And I pray that you can grab hold of that and hang on to it even when the world tries to bring offenses amongst us. That we can look at the heart of that man and say, as he is faithful to the Lord, I'm going to do just what the Apostle Paul said, and I'm going to follow him as he follows Christ. And I can say that to people because of how long I've been following him. So let's go ahead and close in prayer. Again, thank you all for being here. You guys have no idea how much you honor me by honoring this church and my pastor, and especially honoring the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we give you glory. We give you honor and we exalt you. We thank you, Lord God, for who you are. We praise and we bless you, Lord, and we thank you. Thank you again for healing our pastor and his family. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Lord, we just want to give you this whole day and we thank you for it. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are in our hearts. But if there is anyone in this building, anyone in this area, anyone on Facebook Live that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you haven't surrendered to him. The Bible makes it so clear and makes it so easy. God's word declares that if we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus died on the cross and rose again, and we call on his name, that we shall be saved. I paraphrase that. It's up on the screen if you want to see it. But he makes it very clear to us that if we pray and we ask him into our hearts, that he will come in, that he will accept us to himself, and that he'll begin to work in us. So I ask you if you would pray with me right now and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I ask you into my heart I ask you to come in to receive me to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Jesus, today 
I declare you my Lord, my Savior. I accept you and I glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen.